Welcome back to the Enlightening Books Podcast, your go-to source for discovering thought-provoking and illuminating reads. We explore books which inspire personal growth, challenge conventional wisdom, and expand the boundaries of human knowledge. Imagine this, merging ancient Luciferian philosophy with modern therapy. Whoa. That's the unexpected journey we're taking in this deep dive with Aaron Perlman's book, Shadow Light. Okay. And just to add to the intrigue, okay. Perlman wasn't just some uh, armchair philosopher. He studied with Manly P. Hall, right? a legend in mystical circles. Oh, right. So we're dealing with some serious insider knowledge here. It's not every day you see those two worlds collide like that, yeah. you know, ancient wisdom and modern psychology. Mm-hmm. But that's what makes this deep dive so fascinating, mm-hmm. especially for someone like you who loves exploring new perspectives. Right. And Perlman jumps right in, challenging assumptions from the get-go. Yeah. In chapter one, he tackles the light bringer archetype, but not the way we usually think about it. He digs into Lucifer as the symbol of enlightenment, of rebelling against dogma in the pursuit of knowledge. Which is such a relevant concept today, isn't it? Yeah. Think about it. We're drowning in information. Right. Bombarded with different ideologies. Yeah. This idea of Lucifer as the light lord, the one who dares to question, yeah. to seek knowledge, even when it's considered forbidden. Yeah. It's a powerful image, especially for those feeling overwhelmed by the noise. It reminds me of the Prometheus myth, you know? Right. There's something in us that admires those who defy the rules in the name of knowledge, even if it comes at a cost. Absolutely. And what's fascinating is that Perlman connects this directly to personal growth. He argues that to achieve true enlightenment, we have to be willing to question everything, wow. even our deepest beliefs. That's where the real growth happens, when we step outside of our comfort zones and challenge the dogma, right. both internal and external. And that leads perfectly into Chapter 2, where Perlman dives into the shadow self. Now, before you think this is getting too dark, remember, we're talking about those hidden parts of ourselves, the stuff we try to repress because it doesn't fit our ideal image. And this is where Perlman makes a connection that really surprised me. He sees the story of Lucifer, this fall from grace, as a metaphor for our own inner journey Ah. of confronting those shadow parts. It's about acknowledging that we are complex beings with both light and dark within us. So it's not about being good or bad. It's about embracing the wholeness of who we are, shadows and all. Exactly. And here's where the Luciferian philosophy gets really interesting. Okay. Perlman says, it's not about denying those shadow parts, but embracing them. That's the key to self-empowerment. That's a radical idea, isn't it? It is. We're so conditioned to strive for this idea of perfection, to hide our flaws. But what if those flaws, those shadow parts, actually hold the key to unlocking our full potential? It's like trying to walk a tightrope while pretending the other side doesn't exist. You're bound to fall. Right. Perlman's argument is that by acknowledging and integrating our shadow selves, we can finally step into our wholeness and achieve true balance. That makes a lot of sense. So how do we actually do that? How do we bring those shadow parts to light in a healthy way? That's what I'm really curious about. Well, Perlman gets into the practical side of things in Chapter 3, Shadow Work in Action. And this is where he bridges the gap between ancient wisdom and modern psychology in a really intriguing way. Okay. He offers tools like journaling prompts and guided meditations, but he also talks about the importance of creating a safe and sacred space for this work, even incorporating symbolic rituals. Rituals. That's not what I expected from a book on personal growth. It can be surprising. What kind of rituals are we talking about? Don't worry. It's not about joining a secret society or anything like that. Okay. Perlman's approach is very personal and adaptable. Right. He suggests using symbolic items like candles or a personal token that represents your commitment to this journey. Okay. It's about creating a container, both physically and mentally, to hold the intensity of this work. I can see how that would be helpful, especially when dealing with those deeper, more hidden parts of ourselves. It's like setting the stage for inner transformation. Exactly. And what I appreciate is that Perlman doesn't shy away from the psychological aspects either. Yeah. He talks about journaling as a way to reveal those shadow aspects, not through some mystical mumbo jumbo, but by spotting patterns in our reactions and judgments. It's about bringing those subconscious patterns to the surface so we can start to work with them consciously. It's like he's saying, hey, 
your own subconscious is leaving you clues. Pay attention. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And speaking of unexpected connections, chapter four is where things take a really interesting turn. Perlman introduces CBT, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. That's right. It's not exactly the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Luciferian philosophy, is it? Not at all. But Perlman makes this fascinating connection. He says those negative thoughts we have, those self-sabotaging beliefs, are like internal dogma holding us back. Right. And CBT becomes an act of rebellion, just like Lucifer defied the old rules. I love that. It reframes CBT in a whole new light, doesn't it? It does. It's not just about managing your thoughts. It's about breaking free from the mental chains that are holding you back from your full potential. <laughs> it's about claiming your power and choosing thoughts that serve you, thoughts that empower well, you to create the life you want. Okay. I have to admit, when I first saw CBT in the table of contents, I was a little thrown off. But now I see what you mean. It's yeah. like Perlman is giving us this whole new vocabulary for understanding these concepts in a way that's both empowering and actionable. And speaking of actionable, he doesn't just leave us with these big ideas. He actually gives specific examples of empowering beliefs, ones that align with that Luciferian spirit of self-determination, like I have the power to shape my own destiny. That's a powerful affirmation, isn't it? It is. And it speaks to that core Luciferian principle of personal responsibility. Right. It's not about waiting for someone else to give you permission or tell you what you're capable of. It's about recognizing that you have the power within you to create the life you want. It's like he's handing us the keys to our own mental kingdom and saying, go explore. The possibilities are endless. Right. Which, if you think about it, is a pretty amazing gift. Right. But tell me, what other surprises does Perlman have in store for us? What comes after CBT? Well, in Chapter 5, Perlman takes us even deeper into the practical application of these principles with a concept that you might not expect in this context. Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Okay, I'll admit that one threw me for a loop at first. <laughs> I thought mindfulness was all about, you know, meditation cushions and chanting, not exactly the image that comes to mind with Luciferian philosophy. Right. It seems like a bit of an odd pairing on the surface. But Perlman actually draws a really compelling connection. He argues that in the Luciferian tradition, mindfulness isn't just about finding inner peace. It's about cultivating a heightened sense of awareness and intentionality in every moment. So it's not about emptying your mind. It's about being present and engaged with what's happening right here, right now. Exactly. And it ties back to the idea of personal responsibility that we were just talking about. See, when you're truly mindful, you're not just reacting to life on autopilot. You're making conscious choices that align with your values and your goals. It's like you're saying, okay, shadow self, I see you, I hear you, but I'm the one in the driver's seat now. I love that analogy because it really gets at the heart of what Perlman is trying to convey. It's about taking ownership of your thoughts, your emotions, your actions. Uh -huh. And you can only do that when you're fully present and aware. And what's really interesting is that Perlman doesn't just talk about mindfulness in the abstract. He actually provides practical techniques that anyone can use in their daily life, things like breath work and mindful observation. And what I appreciate is that he emphasizes the importance of intentionality in these practices. Mm. It's not enough to just go through the motions. You have to approach them with a clear purpose, a desire to cultivate greater awareness and self-mastery. So it's like instead of just zoning out with a meditation app, you're actively choosing to engage with your inner world in a way that empowers you to make conscious choices. Exactly. And that's where the real transformation happens. Because when you're able to observe your thoughts and emotions without judgment, you create space for greater self-acceptance and growth. This is reminding me of something you said earlier about how Perlman bridges the gap between ancient wisdom and modern psychology. It's like he's taking these esoteric concepts and making them accessible and relevant to our everyday lives. Absolutely. And that's what makes his work so powerful. He's not just presenting a bunch of abstract ideas. He's giving you a roadmap for putting them into practice. Speaking of putting things into practice, I'm curious about chapter six, a ritual for the modern seeker. The word ritual always piques my interest, but I have to admit I'm a little hesitant to ask because I don't want to give anything away for our listeners. I understand. It's one of those things that you have to experience for yourself to really grasp the full impact. But I can say that Perlman's approach to ritual is very personal and empowering. Okay, that's good to know, because I think a lot of people hear the word ritual and they immediately think of something secretive or even spooky. Right. But it doesn't have to be that way at all. In this context, Perlman uses ritual as a way of marking a commitment to the journey of self-discovery and integration. 
So it's less about joining a secret society and more about creating a meaningful experience for yourself, a way of symbolizing your intention to do this work. Exactly. And the ritual he describes is surprisingly simple and adaptable. He suggests using elements like a mirror, candles, both black and white, to symbolize the integration of light and shadow, and a personal token that represents your commitment to this path. I love that imagery, the black and white candles representing the integration of light and shadow. It's like he's saying, embrace all of who you are, the good, the bad, the messy, the beautiful. It's all part of the journey. And that's such a powerful message, isn't it? Because so often we're told that we have to choose, that we have to be one way or the other. But Perlman's approach is all about wholeness, about embracing all aspects of ourselves. It's like he's giving us permission to be fully human in all our complexity. Precisely. And that's where the real freedom lies. So we've covered shadow work, CBT, mindfulness, even ritual. What else does Perlman have up his sleeve? What about chapters seven and eight? Well, in those chapters, Perlman gets even more specific about how to integrate these principles into daily life. Okay, but those chapters sound really practical, which I know is right up our listener's alley. So I don't want to give too much away. You're right. It's better to leave some things for people to discover on their own. But I will say this. If you're looking for concrete tools and techniques to help you step into your power and create the life you want, chapter seven and eight are where it's at. Absolutely. Perlman provides a roadmap for putting these principles into practice in a way that's both inspiring and actionable. So to sum up, we've got this incredible blend of ancient wisdom and modern psychology, all geared towards helping you become the most empowered version of yourself. It's about confronting your shadows, challenging limiting beliefs, and cultivating a sense of radical self-acceptance. And it's not just about feeling good, it's about taking action, making conscious choices, and creating the life you want. It's about stepping into your power and becoming the master of your own destiny. Okay, before we wrap up, I have to ask, is there anything in particular that stood out to you as you were reading Shadow Light? Anything that really resonated with you personally? Because for me, it was that idea of integrating our shadow selves. It's like we spend so much time trying to be uh, good and positive that we forget that those shadow parts are part of us too. And they hold so much wisdom. Imagine if instead of fearing those shadow parts, we could actually learn from them. What if they're not here to sabotage us, but to guide us toward greater wholeness? That's a really powerful way to look at it. And it makes me think about how often we try to suppress those parts of ourselves instead of getting curious about them. Exactly. Perlman encourages us to approach our shadow selves with a sense of curiosity and compassion. It's not about judgment, it's about understanding. It's like he's saying, hey, there's a whole other side to you that you haven't even met yet. Don't you want to get to know yourself better? Mm -hmm. And you know what? That really resonated with me. Me too. And what's remarkable about Perlman's approach is that he doesn't shy away from the more challenging aspects of this work. He acknowledges that confronting your shadow can be uncomfortable, even painful at times. It's like cleaning out a really messy closet, right? You know you've got to do it, but it's not always going to be pretty. Exactly. Yeah. But just like cleaning out a closet, once you get rid of the clutter, you create space for something new. And that's what this journey is all about, creating space for growth, for transformation, for becoming the most authentic version of yourself. So if someone is listening to this right now thinking, OK, this all sounds great, but where do I even start? Hmm. What would you say to them? I'd say start with curiosity. What aspect of yourself have you been avoiding? What part of you makes you feel uncomfortable or ashamed? And then instead of pushing it away, try approaching it with a sense of openness and compassion. It's like, hey, shadow self, I see you. Let's have a conversation. Exactly. And remember, you don't have to do this work alone. Perlman provides all sorts of practical tools and techniques in the book to guide you through this process. He really does give you a roadmap for this journey, doesn't he? He does. And it's a journey that's well worth taking. Because when you embrace your shadow, you step into your wholeness. And that's where the real magic happens. It's like he's saying, stop hiding from yourself. You are powerful beyond measure and you deserve to claim all of who you are. Absolutely. And that's a message that I think we all need to hear. Well, there you had it, folks. A deep dive into Shadow Light, a book that's challenged our assumptions, sparked our curiosity, and left us feeling inspired to embrace all aspects of ourselves. It's a powerful reminder that sometimes the greatest growth comes from exploring the darkest corners of our being. And on that note, we'll leave you with this final thought. What if the thing you've been resisting is actually the key to unlocking your full potential? Keep exploring, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep embracing the fullness of who you are. Until next time, happy diving.